Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at the nature of intermolecular forces. In later videos we'll look at uh, what the four main intermolecular forces are and how to determine what the dominant one is. But this video will be just an overview of what intermolecular forces are all about. Our objectives are to distinguish intermolecular forces from chemical bonds and also to relate basic properties of substances that we can observe in the lab to the intermolecular forces that are found in those samples. Intermolecular forces are these things that we observe that make one molecule attract another. So in this diagram, the intermolecular forces are illustrated by these uh, blue dotted lines, which are trying to show how uh, an atom on one molecule is attracted to an atom on a different molecule. These, um, these interactions, these intermolecular forces, are very weak compared to a chemical bond. So the chemical bond is what holds one atom to another within the molecule, and it's much, much stronger than these intermolecular forces that we're talking about. Um, these intermolecular forces uh, also are temporary. Uh, as molecules move around, these, mo these intermolecular forces um, fall apart. Um, all of these um, intermolecular forces are based on these temporary electrostatic attractions. Um, electrostatic, uh, that's referring like in physics to Coulomb's law, and the take-home lesson for us from Coulomb's law is that opposite charges attract. And then the other uh, big take-home lesson from Coulomb's law is that as charged particles get to be far apart from one another, that force of attraction falls off. In other words, particles have to be close for these um, attractions to take place, and the closer they are, the stronger they are. And so the, um, the just try to summarize that, um, the force um, is inversely proportional to distance. Okay, and one more thing that I wanted to, to point out here is kind of a vocabulary usage note. We use the term intermolecular forces, um, but we'll be talking about things that apply to ions and atoms as well, not just to molecules, but the broad umbrella term for all of these types of interactions is intermolecular force. There is a direct connection between intermolecular forces that are these descriptions of how particles interact with one another and properties which we can observe in lab. The strength of the intermolecular forces present in a sample directly impacts the properties that we observe. So for instance, um, strong intermolecular forces result in high melting points, boiling points, viscosity, and several other um, types of properties. All of these things are um, properties that require breaking particles apart from one another. So for instance, when a sample melts and the substance undergoes this transition from the ordered solid state to the uh, continually moving liquid state, we have to break some of those intermolecular forces that um, are holding the particles in their fixed positions. So if those forces are strong, then the melting point is going to be very high because we have to provide a lot more thermal energy in order to get the particles to start moving relative to one another. Very same type argument can be made for boiling and having high boiling points because in boiling not only are uh, the particles moving you have to separate them so that they're far enough apart that the intermolecular forces are negligible because that's one of the um, 
the pieces of the kinetic molecular theory of gases, that gas particles are non-interacting. And so if you have strong intermolecular forces, you're going to have high melting points, high boiling points. And then viscosity is a liquid's resistance to flow. And so if a, a substance is going to flow on a particle level, these particles need to be able to slide past one another as the bulk substance is moving and flowing. And if the particles are very strongly attracted to one another, then the, um, the molecules won't flow past each other very easily and the viscosity will be um, much higher. Weak intermolecular forces have the opposite effect. We have low boiling points, low melting points, low viscosity. And these are the types of things that we're going to be talking about here in Chapter 12. Uh, but I also wanted to point out something that's going to come up in Chapter 13, and that is that the compatibility of intermolecular forces affects the solubility of one substance and another. If you have a substance that has permanent charge separation on it, it will readily dissolve in another substance that has that permanent charge separation in it. Um, generally, the types of substances we're talking about in this category uh, would be considered polar or even ionic. So an ionic salt will easily dissolve in a polar solvent, such as water. But if you have substances that don't have this permanent charge separation, um, then the, um, the, it will readily dissolve in a substance that also does not have this uh, uh, permanent charge separation. And we refer to these types of substances as being nonpolar. And um, something that is polar will not dissolve in something that is nonpolar. Um, a great example of that is oil and water. Oil is nonpolar, water is polar, and oil and water will not mix because their intermolecular forces are not compatible. One last note, um, one of the things that is very, very challenging in Gen Chem 2 is that the material is very cumulative. We're learning about intermolecular forces in chapter 12, but before we could even learn about that, you had to remember how to identify if a molecule is polar, which was a topic from back in Gen Chem 1. And then once we get all of these intermolecular forces straight in chapter 12, you're going to have to apply them to talk about solubilities in chapter 13. This course, just like a uh, math course, is very cumulative, so you can't forget things as we move on into the next chapter. To wrap up this section, let's revisit the objectives. The first one is to distinguish intermolecular forces from chemical bonds. Chemical bonds hold atoms together within a molecule. Intermolecular forces attract one molecule to a neighboring molecule. And then to relate basic properties of substances to intermolecular forces. Well, the basic idea here is that something that has strong intermolecular forces between its particles um, will exhibit properties um, that reflect that, such as high melting points, high boiling points, and high viscosities.